hurting them? Am I the dog that's hurting them? <laughs> I have no idea what we're doing. Jean Glock, Vikings Ambassador at Large, and I want to invite you to join me on one of my favorite river itineraries. I'm in Provence right now. We're sailing from Avignon north to Lyon. We're going to see many iconic sites that you've read about, but on this trip, I hope we can dig a little deeper using Vikings contacts to discover more of what makes the French so deliciously French the joie de vivre that we all want to take home with us when we come. I know you've heard of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites, and we'll see quite a few on this trip, but have you heard of UNESCO's Cultural Heritage Designations? These are those things that give the country, meld with their history, and to give it the feeling and the senses that you feel when you travel that really create the memories you take home. One of those UNESCO cultural heritage designations is the French gastronomic meal. It doesn't seem so intangible. They call them intangible cultural heritage de designations. But let's find out why that part of their cultural history, how it's evolved, why it has become such an institution worldwide. Another that's nominated and not yet formally recognized is the French baguette. Again, not very intangible to me, but the history of how it developed, why it developed, that's what we're going to look into and discover France on a little deeper level as we sail up the Rhone River. So many things to discover beyond food, but what makes France somewhere we all want to visit and take those memories home with us? Thanks for joining me. Today, we're in Chateau Neuf de Pape. This may not be what you think of when you hear Chateau Neuf de Pape, but this is the Chateau Neuf, the new chateau of the popes. And when the papacy moved to Avignon in the 14th century, this was their summer home where they built their vineyards. But we're not here for that today. Today, we want to learn about the most famous in the world wine of Chateau Neuf de Pape. And thankfully, I have a wonderful expert to join us and teach us why the wines of this region are so renowned and so delicious. Pauline, thank you for joining us today and to teach us about all we need to know about Chateau Neuf de Pape wines. Welcome to Chateau Neuf de Pape, Jane. It's pretty windy today. Huh? It's very windy today. Yeah, it's really windy. This wind, we call it Mistral, the master oh. of the wind. It's the protection of all the winemakers in the, all the Rhone Valley, to be honest. 
Is that mystical protection or it's protect actual? It's protecting her because it's coming like this usually after rainfall. Oh. It was raining two days ago and now it's drying everything. So less humidity during the summer with the heat like this means less disease. And during the winter, it's also less frost for her. So really this wind is really important for her. Well, God bless the Mistral. Of course. But you know what? To, to give you a secret, it's, it's pretty quiet for her, this kind of thing. No. Yes, you can go to 100, 110, 120 sometimes, so which is a stronger wind. And today is about? It's about 40, 50 kilometers. Sufficient for me. Exactly. And, and I hope the vines. Yes, it's pretty great for the vines. Another element which is really, really famous, and I would like to talk to you about is this kind of rocks that we have done here. These? These ones, yes. I've never seen vineyards with this many rocks. Yeah, and there is not too much on this field, to be honest, because you can, sometimes you can have more than that. 70% of the soil sometimes is just made in with that, so. They're very warm. They're really warm. This is really a good point, Jane, because this one keep the heat during the day and restore to the floor during the night, during the winter. It's a protection for the frost during the winter. So that's how they protect the vines. Yes, and also during the, win during the summer is um, making more maturation of our fruit before to harvest them. Because you see, the fruits are really close to the ground. Yes. Because of the wind. We couldn't make it too high anyway. It's going to fall. And so the fruit are really close to them, so they make more maturation. It's like a little sense that we have everywhere on the floor. The magic of the wind, the magic of the rocks. Nature gives to us beautiful condition to grow up vines here, to be honest. My little bit of wine knowledge knows that you blend wines in Chateau Neuf de Pop. And tell me about that. How many varieties? Are they always blended? We, we do, uh, yes, we do most of the time we do blending, like 90% of the time is blending wine and one of the uh, 13 different type of 13. grapes. 13. Yes, 13 different type of grapes that we uh, grow up here is really famous. We call it Grenache. Grenache. Grenache is the god of Chateauneuf du Pape. We have a little private joke. We say in Grenache we trust. In, in Grenache we trust. Can you show me Grenache vines? Let's go to or do that. Or maybe the other 12 as well. <laughs> Let's go. Now, Jen, we are inside the vineyard, in the middle of the Grenache. This is beautiful. Is it? Apart from the taste, to be here in this view in the valleys. Yeah. These vines look so old. How old would you estimate that vine is? I think this vine is pretty much around 20 or 30 years, I think so. It's close to be a old vine. You can see with the how is the the vines at the beginning, you see? We call that gnarly. 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 <laughs> so yes, the Grenache is really important here. Represent 50% minimum all the time in each bottle of red Chateau Neuf du Pape. So if you have a bottle of red, you know it's 50% Grenache. Yeah, minimum. Because, you know, we don't have to put 50% systematically, but this is the identity of Chateau Neuf du Pape. How you can recognize the taste of Chateau Neuf du Pape, it's also because of this Grenache. And what is the unique taste of the Grenache? Grenache really tastes something like really it's a beautiful combination between something fruity and spicy. We say spicy fruit, you know, like something a little bit peppery and, and cherries and everything. So yes, this is a good, beautiful example about a beautiful Can Grenache. I go look at it? Of course you can. If I can climb over the rocks, tell me, is it ready to harvest? Oh, absolutely not. Not uh, right absolutely not. not. No, we have to leave it on the on the on the vines, of course, because at this time you see you have also some green ones sometimes. I so see them. Need a little bit more juice inside, so more sun. So normally the harvest time it's around end of August, oh. beginning of September. They begin to look like raisins. Yes, they have to. Yeah. Pauline, I've enjoyed the lesson, the Mistral. The magic rocks, harvest time. I think you want to try it now. I no? do very much. Let's go to doing it. Thank you. We left the vineyards after a windy morning during which Pauline had taught me so much. I learned that Chateau Neuf de Pape is not only a wine appellation that includes 320 vineyards, but a region and the medieval chateau that the popes used as a summer home. Felt the warmth of the galets roulet or small rocks critical in retaining heat. And I certainly felt the mistral or wind which dries the vines after rains. 
But on to the highlight of our visit, where we donned aprons before tasting the world-famous wines at the Maison Boisson. So welcome to Maison Boisson, Jane, and welcome in the one of the oldest house in Chateauneuf-du-Pape. It's beautiful. Yes. Looks like pretty new because we rebuilt it, but like you can see on the front barrel, we start in 1898 here. One family? One family. The first family was calling Boisson, mean little piece of wood, because they oh. were barrel makers first. Of, of course. So they call it little piece of wood. So we have to drink our beautiful wine now, and I would like to talk to you about the secrets that we have in Chateauneuf du Pape. I want to hear the secrets. Because I don't know if you know it, Jane, but we produce a little teeny percentage of white Chateauneuf du Pape. I have never heard of white Chateauneuf du Pape. I know, I know, because that represents all the time, like I mean, le less than 5% of our production. And nobody on the 365 winemakers exports the white wine. So there's no exported no. white Chateau Neuf de Pape. No. So this is very exclusive. They don't export because there's so little or because it's such a treasure. Uh, it's a little bit both, to be honest. There's not enough quantity to export because when I say 5%, that represents for all the production, but okay. each winemaker produce only like less than 1% of white. And it's an extremely good quality. So it's a secret. I can't wait. To, should we start with white or start with red? We're going to start by white, yes, because Good. red are pretty tannic here, so it's better to having not too much hemp added in the mouth. That See? sounds beautiful. Thank you. So when we're tasting wine, what I, what I say all the time, that it's better to take the glass only by the stem, usually. Not like this mm. or not like that. Otherwise, we're going to warm it, the glass, and we're going to less feel the flavors that we have inside, okay. more the alcohol sensation. So this is why, anyway. So like you can see, you have a beautiful colors, really transparent wine. Really, really transparent. Meaning, usually, that it's a young wine. Okay. So, so when was this bottled? So this bottle is picked, I mean, the grapes are picked in 2020. Oh, okay. So Very two, young. Two years ago. Okay. Yeah, because like I see him it's before, like we, we harvest in September. So it's going to be two years only in September. Okay. If you smell the first bouquet, it's pretty sweet, this kind of smell. Mm -hmm. We can recognize Very like, a, yeah, some mm -hmm. pear or some green apple like this that we can recognize. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's better flavors. I mean, it's better. It's stronger um, sensation if you turn a little bit the wine before. Yeah, perfect. You can also use the, the barrels, which is also good ah. to do some circle like this. I, I like that. Yeah. And what I say all the time, that after a couple of glasses, it's less dangerous on the table anyway. <laughs> Very, that's great advice. And you brought one of the rocks from the vineyard, yeah. the mag magic rocks. Yeah, we have all the time one closet in here. And now you can smell it, it's stronger perfume. And what we didn't smell before, but now it's, it's down, it's the white flowers. That's really oh. like, we have a, a type of grapes called a roussade, which is pretty roussade. flowery. Definitely, and less sweet smelling. L exactly, less sweet smelling, a little bit more, yeah, fresh. Something like citrusy or so, something mm -hmm. like this. It's good to try it now. And I would like to say, à votre santé. Jane. A, a votre santé et merci. You're welcome. Oh, lovely. Pretty refreshing. Pretty. Especially after our hike through the vineyards and of the, in the heat of summer. And you can say that it looks like a little bit young also still. You have a little bit of acidity on the both side yeah. of the tongue, which is pretty completely normal for the type of grapes that we use here. So if you like less acidity in the white, we say that we need to be patient in the Chateauneuf du Pape because you have less this acidity after four or five years. So this one is only two years. So it's a baby. Exactly. A kind of teenager, what I like to say. <laughs> because you can feel the youngness and the maturity arrive behind that anyway. Well, thank you for sharing You're the welcome. secret treasure. You're welcome. But now the one that we all know yeah and this one is really special too for us oh good we are really proud of it we don't export this one cuvee that we call also no because it's a reserve i mean it's a little quantity of something and it's an old vine 
Oh. How, talk, how old? Uh, yeah, I talked to you about that we have old vine that we've seen outside that it was 30, 40 years old, but this one is going to be 102 years old next year. The vine? The vine outside. Oh, We're, and what would be the different flavor of grape from a 100-year-old vine versus a 10-year-old vine? In fact, it's, it's I mean, it's 100 years old that these vines catch something from the ground and we have a pretty beautiful nature all around us, like wild olive, like thyme, rosemary. So of course there is an impact on your wine. So you have something really spicy here, oh. really spicy and about the fruit, because of course you have a sensation of fruit because of how a king, the Grenache, gives to her a beautiful fruit. Which we learned about. But we, we have more something like prune, plum, fig, something like this. And stand on a new ones that you have more something like cherries or raspberries or something like this. This one is darker fruit and spicier one. Now I see it was bottled in 2016. Is it considered the good time to drink this now or does it need to age more? we can start to drink it now by himself because it's like I like to call, I say it before, like a teenager okay. wine still. So even if it's too dry for you, you can also have some uh, stronger food with uh, to, oh, to make course. it a little bit smoother also. Oh, so this is it. Okay. I show you two cuvées today, one uh, red and one white, but anyway, I have more than that to show you. So this is the red one. So 2016, oh. it's also a beautiful year. Oh, I'm holding the bowl. I, I failed my first lesson. So, oh, look at the legs. Yeah, the legs, it's great to see it. To see it, you can turn it slowly like this and stop to turn. Oh, I see. And now happen the legs. I mean, you say it legs, but in France, we are a little bit like dramatic when we talk about it because... <laughs> oh no, I can't, don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, of course, we call it tears. He's crying oh, that's for That's much hers. nicer. I don't know, anyway. I don't know if it's better that it's running or if it's crying, but anyway, that happened. We have a little drops. I see the teardrops. Yeah, and they really falling down, really slowly down, mm -hmm. because it's a viscous wine. Viscous Very mean, thick. This viscous mean with a lot of alcohol contained inside, oh. or with a lot of sugar sometimes. Ooh. But there is no sugar inside. We have a lot of sun, so they give to us a lot of sugar inside the fruits, so a lot of sugar at the end of the fermentation, a lot of alcohol Which contained. Which is why they stay on the vine so late until they have shriveled almost as raisins exactly. with the sugar. Exactly. This is it. This is I'm it. A, I'm a quick study. Yeah, oh, you, you learn really quickly anyway. Yeah, great, great. So if you smell also the bouquet, Jane, you're going to realize that this one is spicier straight away, but you can mm. feel what I was talking before, the spicy fruit. It smells like winter. Yeah. We say that it's a winter wine. Oh, well, job. You can give it a little bit of oxygen and oh, also, no, yeah, like, yeah. On, the, on the barrels could be maybe less dangerous. Perfect. So now, if you smell it again, definitely earthier wine here. Much Leather earthier. Leatherier or something yes. like this. We talk about underwood also for this one. Ah, uh, makes sense. You know when you walked on the forest in the morning and this wet everywhere, you can smell wet dirt, wet grass, wet dead tree. We have this uh, sensation of underwood right now. Let's go to drink that one. I can imagine. Time. Again, Santé, chin chin. Santé à vous. Mmm. You see, strong in the smell, but really smooth Very in the mouth. Very smooth. Really Very smooth. A kind of velvet sensation right now. Oh, it's, it's really divine. I really love it too. Mm. But this is why I say it, it's a teenager, you see? You see, Jen, we can anyway feel the, the tannins, the dryness sensation happen in the tooth around the tongue, which is, which is a, the, the youngness still, which is pretty present. But it's really getting away really quickly because the maturity arrived really quickly behind, I can tell it. And it's a wine that we call long in the mouth at the end. Oh, that, that is magnificent. I love it. We were chatting earlier off camera and you said something that I really loved that I'd like to repeat. You said you like visitors to your chateau to take back souvenirs of memories. Exactly. And it, it's just such a beautiful saying for everything with travel, but particularly with wine and the memories that you've associated with the wines, of with course. the vineyards, will be the ones I take home. Perfect. And Till I return and taste these when they're grown-ups. Thank you so much, Pauline. You're welcome. It's, it's been a wonderful day here. It was in really Chateau great.
Uh, thank you to visit us anyway. Uh, Sante. Sante again. We have to finish that now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> So we say goodbye to Pauline and the fine wines of Chateau Bourchon and head to our next visit at Moulin Saint Jean, where we learn about another treasure of Provence. The Sordon family has been producing fine olive oils for four generations, but this visit, like so many, turned out to be about much more than just olives. Good morning. Welcome. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> welcome on my farm. Thank you. Okay, so welcome on my family business. It's a, it's a pleasure for our to receive you. It's oh. a, it's a very uh, important for our, and uh, I'm so excited to to present you all my information and family story. Do you know? <laughs> oh, that is what I want to hear and <laughs> taste. Yes, of course. Please, Jean. Oh, a, a little coffee to, to start. Yes, of course. Do you know, Jen? Ma'am, she's Italiana. It's oh. very, very important moment, the so coffee time. You have to taste French Italian coffee. <laughs> oh, happily, happily. Yes. Here's to Moulin Saint Jean. Jean. Saint Jean. <laughs> Do you know French olive oil? Do I know? No. no, you're going to discover. I can't wait. <laughs> Tell you me. You know, it's very important because um, all the time when I press, all the time I remember grandfather, grandma, daddy, all the time I think family. Because um, when I was young, do you know, I came on the olive trees with my sister, with parents. Uh, when I was young, I have a secret. Never I imagined to become Master Moline. Never. <laughs> my farm, since 10 generations, it was a main job. Only main job. And uh, do you know, when my sister and me born, oh my God, it was a disaster for grandfather. <laughs> oh. But now, he, little by little, we, take, we took place, yes, and grandfather was so happy. Good. Every day, his grandfather come with me. Magali, do you know? Yes, thank you. <laughs> are you the first woman to? Are you the first woman to be a master miller? Exactly. In 1998, we were the first feminine oil mill in France. Oh, girl power. <laughs> well, yes, girl power. <laughs> and men too, because uh, but all the time, daddy and grandfather are with our. Oh. It's very important. Every day, they learn me. Magali, okay. <laughs> It's a very family business. When you buy a bottle of uh, Saint Jean meal, when you come on my meal, you have to, to understand all the remember of the family. It's very important. Oh, it makes it very special. You said 10 generations, the trees are 10 generations old. Yes, of course. And uh, you know, I have an important story. On my family, when a baby born, do you know we plant a new olive trees? It's a symbol of the life. Do you know which is your tree? Yes. I, oh, you know, I have 4,000 olive trees. Do you know many babies? <laughs> <laughs> yes, when my sister and me born, daddy planted about 60 olive trees. <laughs> Tell me how you become a master miller. Yes, I took 10 years of formation. Because, yes, to start, sorry. Um, when I was young with my sister, we learned with daddy, grandfather. But now it's absolutely important to, to be professional. And I took 10 years of formation, and now I'm a ten. taster. I'm an international taster of Oliver. It's very important, but it's supposed to be my daddy. <laughs> oh, so you're an international taster for the appellation for this region? Exactly. Do you know um, in the world, no, yeah. in the Europe, I'm sorry, we have a special label, AOP, yes. Appalachian Original Protecting, like for the wine, champagne, oh. and olive oil. I knew course. for wine, I didn't know for olive oil. Yeah, it's very important. Why? Because AOP means preserve knowledge, preserve tradition, and uh, we have a different traditional literature. It's very important because physicists speak about the family, speak about uh, a patient. And uh, yes, we have a controllers because when you produce an AOP, 
you have to control the freshness, extra virgin, and the quality, the typical taste, like for the wine. Is there a special flavor that is noted for Provence, for the olive oil? Exactly. You know, it's a very important question. Do you know, on the, on the Mediterranean basin, on the south of France, the Provence, mm -hmm. we have eight different areas of French olive trees. Like for the wine, we have different okay. tastes. The Beauce Valley, we have a different taste because we have four typical varieties. We press separately, and after we have to blend them together and burn my typical olive oil. It starts very sweet, very delicate, oh. and after you discover freshness, artichoke flavors, green grass. Artichoke grass, just like wine. Yeah, exactly. It isn't too intensive, too, too strong, too bitter, but it's very good. Do you know? Um, I speak a lot of time with the chef, and a lot of chefs explain me, do you know, Magali, why it's so good to cook with olive oil? Because an olive oil develops more the natural flavors of the product. Oh. If you put few drops, example, uh, with a tomato, you have five times more the flavors of the tomato. And um, We knew that instinctively, but probably didn't know it as a fact. <laughs> I love that. Exactly, exactly. And um, do you cook all with olive oil? Yes, yes a little. Course. Good. And extra virgin? Usually. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Do you know? Extra virgin, virgin, a lot of people ask what the difference is. Very important. Because when you go on the shop, a lot of olive oil. It's very difficult to find a natural and authentic olive oil. But please, you have to look the labels. A lot of information. AOP, very important. And the second time, you have to look Extra virgin. Extra virgin means Always. between the picking and the pressing means a uh, very short time and you don't have bad taste. You have a lovely taste. Very important. A question. I know that you're having a drought all over Europe. Is a drought good for the olive harvest or is it endangered? Do you have like wine, good and bad harvest or are the trees a little more hardy? Exactly. Do you know? Uh, like for the wine, we have a good and bad year because it depends on the weather, of course. Mm -hmm. Olive trees need a sun for the good taste, don't a lot of rain. Why? Because after we have a washed taste. Ah. Uh, we need a, a little rain, of course, huh? because but not uh, too much. if I have a summer like this year, very sunny, we have dry. But um, olive trees need to be irrigated on April. Um, we have a good on bad year again because olive trees are pollinated by the wind, no bees. If oh, I don't. They didn't. Exactly. By the wind. It's incredible. Uh, we have a wind, and on May, when the blossom opens, the flowers open, mm -hmm. sorry, I don't have no, a perfect time. <laughs> that is perfect. Uh, we need the wind because the after opening, stay two days and fall. Two days yes. for the wind to pollinate 5,000 yeah. trees? The life, yes. There it's is a, a high risk. Yes, exactly. And uh, sometimes we pray, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we hope, we cross the fingers. And uh, yes, depend of the weather, the wind, the rain. It's They're like very that. temperamental. Exactly. <laughs> like our. <laughs> Should we go look at the olive grove? Yes, if you want, of course. And it's a tell your mama the Italian coffee. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good. Perfect. <huh? laughs> okay, so we're going. Thank you. <laughs>
uh, with a lot of people from my village and we celebrate Saint Jean. Oh, okay. Of and course. Saint Jean Baptiste. Saint oui. Jean, Saint Jean Baptiste. And the, the last day of picking of olives. It's lovely. You have to wonder. I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> I will be here. When I was young, I came here and I have a lot of olive trees and for these olive trees, it's very important to understand. These olive trees are planted when my grand grandfather born. This is when my sister born, after oh. when I born, and after you're going to look olive trees planted when my son born. Oh. Remember 600. <laughs> oh, look, it is the whole family history in olive trees. This is a lot of symbol, a lot of information. Do you look for these olive trees? There are several feet. Because France, you know that we represent less of 3% of the world production. Why? Because on February 1956, a terrible frost arrived on the south of France, all the olive trees frozen. It was a disaster. And do you know, 80% uh, of French olive trees frozen. It was oh. incredible. And grandfather, to continue to live, stopped the mill, cut all the olive trees as a fit, and do you know, 10 years after, they start again. What they means? came back with many, with many trunks. Exactly. And oh. You have to imagine uh, on the land, the roots to be, and the olive trees start again with the new shoots. If you look four feet, they are down four olive trees. It's one olive tree start again. And now, are there different types of olive trees within yes. your orchard? Remember, I have uh, four different types. Right. Salonang, Blanquette, Verdal, and Grossan. These varieties, remember, they are typical of my area. And we pick them on two times, table olives on September and October to December for olive oil. Same trees, Same but trees. the time that you pick them, whether they're for table or for the olive oil. Yes, but it's very important to understand. Um, olives, when they ripe, they, when they mature, change of color and change of taste. Green, perfect okay. for the green table olives. And the same variety when they're ripe, so delicious for olive oil. Ah. And do you know, we wait December, why not January, to pick again the black olives. We select January. one by one. Yes, January, why not December? But um, depend on the weather, of course. Huh? The weather takes the decision. <laughs> and uh, after the spring, um, we have to, we have a very important job. We have to prune olive trees like a goblet chip. Every tree? Every. Yeah, uh, do you know why? Because an olive tree, it's pollinated by the wind, remember? I, I have so, learned. Yes, uh, if you prune like a sunglass, uh, the, the wind go inside uh, to oh. pollinate all the flowers. And I see the perfect globes all around. Exactly. You know, um, Olive grow only on the new branches, so it's very important to prune again to took a, a new uh, branches. To generate new branches. Yeah. Do you want to show you exactly the picture of my label? Of, uh... I would love to see the okay, picture of the label. So... <laughs> Please. You mentioned a Van Gogh painting. Yes. Tell I, me the connection and, and what I can look for. Yes, alors why Van Gogh and Léo Lelay? Do you know we have two very important painters on Provence? And because, do you know, on Provence, the time of grandfather, of course, the woman with the traditional Provencal clothes, picking olives, mm -hmm. the men were strong, eh? carry and press olive oil, but uh, it was uh, lovely to look a lot of women with the traditional clothes. And to remember this is, uh, because it was a feast on the chapel, my sister and me as a close, Provencal clothes, mm -hmm. and grandfather take a, the picture to use like a label of my bottle of olive oil. How beautiful. Can we go look and taste uh, yes, these of course. wonderful olive oils of you've course. taught us about? Thank <laughs> of you. Of course, we're going to taste it, yes. Here we are outside the mill under this gorgeous sycamore tree on a summer afternoon in Provence. Doesn't get much nicer. <laughs> Except maybe could we taste one of the olive oils we've learned so much about. Could you tell me a little bit about what's on the label? Yeah, of course. Alors, do you look? When you buy an olive oil, 
All the time you have to look the name, okay? Moulin Saint Jean Mill means a traditional olive oil. On the so mass is meal. Yes, no. exactly. Traditional. After you have to look AUP. Do you look AUP? It's very important. You have to recognize his symbol. The circle, yellow and red, means AUP. Okay, it's a time. Yellow and red and mass. I've got it. Remember extra virgin means Aye. okay, extra fresh. Cold extract because now we don't press. And the most important, where come from? From Spain, Italy, France, of course. <laughs> but please, never buy from Europe. From Europe means a lot of blending. Oh, without the distinctive flavors you've exactly. taught us. If you want to buy a good olive oil, select from one country, AUP, and if you can, from a meal. No industrial. Are you okay? I appreciate the lesson. I will yeah. use it in my <laughs> next shopping trip. Do you know for the tasting, three parts. You smell, you put in your mouth, and after you try to recognize. Don't choking, eh? it isn't a taste. Uh -huh. The peppery taste, perhaps you recognize in your mouth. If you recognize here, means fresh olive oil. So down, okay. Don't confuse. Down further. Uh, so, this is it for you. Do you look? It's a gold color of olive oil. Mm -hmm. This is for you, this is for me. Hello, you know? And in the sunlight, even golder. It's very important. When I press it, the color is green. Naturally, olive oil became yellow. Oh. You put your hand on, you turn just a little. Why? To took a temperature, it's easier to recognize all the flavors. Are you ready? Ready. Now you're going to smell it. Mm. Do you recognize the leaves of tomatoes, the green grass, artichoke flavors? I've got everything but the artichoke. Maybe that'll be on the taste. <laughs> now you're going to put it in your mouth and you turn a long time. Mm. You are red. Start sweet. Almond nuts. Oh, after you have green grass, artichoke. Do you recognize it? <laughs> and I feel and the now pepper. Do you the I peppery. feel the pepper. Yeah. Perfect olive oil. Hello, because I want to show you the pepper, it is in the taste. Now you're going to taste it with the bread. You know that it's a perfect breakfast of daddy. The morning olive oil and bread. So good. You have to taste with the bread. Never you recognize the pepper. It's, a, it's incredible. I now feel like an expert. Do you want to taste it? I do, but I'd like the behind the scenes, my, the, <laughs> the men who are making this happen to come yeah. join me. Nicholas and Adam, you get okay. the first taste this time. Uh, yeah, good. Thank you. It's for you. Merci. Tell me if you taste the artichokes. Few drops, and do you look? You don't have a lot of, uh, few drops and you have a lot of taste, okay? Mm. With the bread, you recognize uh, the sweetie and the freshness. But you don't have the peppery. No. Because peppery is in an aroma. No. Okay. And do you know, I sell my olive oil at a different Michelin star chef, and a lot of times they explain me, do you know why, Magali, it's very important to cook with a fruity and don't to beat olive oil? Because you can cook with all, with the fish, with the vegetables, and I repeat, olive oil, it's a natural developed flavors of the project. Okay. Few drops with the tomato, you have five times more the flavors of the tomato. Do you like? I love, I love. <laughs> now the question I have, since I have carry-on luggage, can you buy your olive oil in the States? No. Oh. I have a problem. Then I will check my luggage because this is going oh. home. <laughs> you know, I have a dream. Every year, my sister, my parents and me, we have a dream. Why not produce more? Because we can't export. We produce just quantities for the uh, uh, wine shop, delicatessen shop, and chef. But uh, now I'm so happy because I have the online. <laughs> oh, good. But, uh, no, please. I think people would like to hear. So online, they can order. Yes, but it's an important uh, in question because I can't export. And oh. so it's very important for me to receive guests from Viking. You know why? Because with the guests from Viking Cruise, I'm like exporting with them. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> it's are. It's very important. You know, France represents only 3 or 2% of the world production. And uh, when the guests are, I can speak about my family business. I can speak about French olive oil. And for me, it's very important. Your so passion you. is clear. You're yeah. not just exporting the taste. <laughs> You're exporting yes. really what makes 
yeah. the French way of life is so spectacular and so unique. I, I can't thank you enough for sharing <laughs> your family history, your expertise, your master tasting, exactly. and your olive oil that I am taking a small can home with me. Thank you so much, Magli. It's Thank been wonderful. You. May it, what Merci. is the traditional Provençal? Kiss one, kiss two, kiss three, kiss three, kiss. Yes. May we? Are we? <laughs> um, Un, deux, trois. trois. Thank you. Oh, merci beaucoup. It's merci. been a true pleasure and honor. <laughs> it's a pleasure for me. Thank you so much. Thank My you family. so much. Leaving Moulin Saint-Jean with a new expertise on the cultural heritage of olive oils, we head back to the ship for dinner. Our ship is docked right next to the walled city of Avignon, and the golden hour beckons as we hop on a Ferris wheel for a stunning, if slightly shaky, view of the city. Nicholas, a former program director on board this cruise and now overseeing all the Viking cruises in France and Portugal, joined us. I didn't tell you, I really don't like Ferris wheels. Unfortunately, neither do I. <laughs> We're a great <laughs> pair to interview I, yeah, on a Ferris I, wheel. I thought, Good job, yeah, cameraman. Exactly. But <laughs> well, here we are. Let's make the best of it. Exactly. You've spent many nights in Avignon as former program director on the Viking ships. Correct. Tell me what I'm seeing and what I can't miss. So, really, this time of day in the evening when it's a little cooler and the sun starts going down, these southern French villages and cities, they really shine with the, the limestone and the lighting. Uh, and it's my favorite time of day to just take a stroll through them and see them. Um, and the, the views are just spectacular. And this Ferris wheel is here every summer. So, you know, it's something that we recommend our guests to do from time to time as well. If they enjoy Ferris wheels. The view is worth it. Yeah. Maybe. Absolutely. Strolling sounds nice. Absolutely. And then, of course, now behind us is the famous uh, uh, Pont d'Avignon. Can you sing it? Uh, sur le Pont d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. Sur le Pont d'Avignon, on y danse, on y rond. Uh, yeah, excuse me for my, <laughs> my voice. It was good. That was good. Yeah, but you can see the, oh, the broken see bridge the right over there, right behind us. How beautiful. Uh, which I'm going to mess nice. up your filming and take a yeah, picture, I'm sorry. But you should. This view is really great. There we go. Look for it on Instagram. Yeah. This is the time to see Avignon, not when it was 102 or 103 during the day. This exactly. is perfect. This is perfect. You know, small breeze, plenty of shade. Uh, you know, glass of rosé. This is these are the best conditions to see uh, Avignon in. Oh. And then you get, you know, these views of the palace. It is impressive. Which, yeah, always resembles more of a fortress. It was almost a, a military coup to to get the papacy over here, uh, or you can at least compare it to that. couldn't resist the chance to walk around Avignon in the evening. It was alive with diners and outdoor cafes, children playing, and locals just enjoying a summer evening. Nicholas promised a spectacular view if we climbed just a few steps to the top of the Palais. After a full day of filming in over a hundred degree heat, I almost said no. Thank goodness I didn't. It was a perfect ending to our first day in Provence. Nicholas, thanks for bringing us up at sunset. This is magical. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. It'd be a shame to keep this all to myself, you know. Uh, <laughs> these views like these are meant to be shared. This is just beautiful. Yeah. It's, 
it's hopping tonight. Is yeah. this typical for inside the city walls at Avignon at night? Absolutely. So a couple of factors. Uh, there's a big cultural life here. Uh, as I said before, the theater festival, the largest one mm -hmm. in Europe, uh, brings a lot of, of artistic uh, um, uh, attention to the city every year. A lot of performers come here all throughout the year. And there's also a university here, right outside the city walls. Oh. And so a lot of students come here as well. So there's always something going on. And, you know, there's plenty of terraces where people just enjoy a glass of wine. And maybe the before. weather's lovely in exactly. the evening. And they'll do this before they go see a theater show, which sometimes is open air as well, which ah. they can do uh, in this area, or before they go see a movie or a walk in this area. Um, and then there's also a, a, the River Island, right next to where we're docked, where a lot of people also go, where there's a lot of nature for camping as well. Oh. And a lot of the people who try to find a kind of refuge there then come in here in the evening. A so, lot of vacationers come to camp that are yeah. French and... Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And then so the Americans stay come the on the riverboats. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Well, they all get to see it. It's, it's a unique medieval town. Yeah, there's nothing Not really quite... Not just because of the Palais de Pape, but yeah. very the, unique. The walls around the city, the, the, the life that is here, it really is this little gem uh, that more people should take the time to discover. Well, you're helping us. Thank you. My pleasure.